Let's go back and let's see if we can get a little further. And uh, I know I don't have to force myself, force you all to try to get it all because I live here. So uh, we can always come back and keep going later on. Amen. All right. So let's look at, uh, at uh, Isaiah 46. Amen. I always get theme music, don't I? I don't know what that is. I get theme music all the time. Every hero has to have some theme music. <laughs> Praise God. Isaiah 46, we were reading there last night. Uh, I'm going to start right at verse 3. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb even to your old age. I am he, and, I, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I will carry you. In my Bible, there's an, there's an exclamation point after that. I will carry you. <laughs> I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. So we started talking about last night, and we'll finish that or continue that tonight, uh, on God will take care of you. Now, we were talking about how people all over this Babylonian system, they're all fretful and worried about, you know, how they're going to get their needs met. They're trying to, you know, people, they go and they hustle, get in the hustle and bustle, and they're going to work two or three jobs to get their needs met. They're going to do all this on the side, everything. And I'm not, I'm not saying, uh, uh, not against you doing something as enterprising, but when people get into this hustle and bustle, trying to make their own or, or meet their own needs, what they're getting over into is self-reliance and self-dependence. Amen? And that's, that's edging God out. That's that Babylonian system. And God doesn't want us in that Babylonian system of self-reliance and self-dependence and self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency. He wants us, and God has always wanted for us, to depend on him for everything. That's right. That's right. God set it up from the very beginning that you and I would look to him and him alone. That's you remember back in, in Genesis chapter 1, uh, when, when God created the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. right? Remember that? Yeah. Genesis 1? This is the beginning of your Bible. Genesis 1, <laughs> and he began to day by day create all these things. Right, right. And you notice the last creation was man. Right? right? He put all those things in creation in place before he put man here. Because he was preparing for man ahead of time. God made sure he, he divided the, the land from the waters. And he made, God made sure, y'all know, that we are 75% water. And so he made sure the earth was 75% water. He made sure the, earth, the sea was full of all kind of teeming things. And fowls of the air came out of the sea and all those things came out, and God made sure. In fact, over in Genesis chapter 1, uh, there's a scripture here, hallelujah, where God, God tells Adam something. You know God, he creates Adam here. Then in verse 27, says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Verse 28, after he created them, then God blessed them. So the first word they, words they heard was blessed, <laughs> all right? Bless them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living or creeping thing that creeps upon the earth, moves on the earth. Verse 29, and God said, see, I have given you. All right, y'all missing that. Y'all going too far. After he blessed him, he said, now see, I have given you every herb that you'll see from which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit you'll see, to you it shall be for food or we can say for provision. So God said after he blessed him, the very next thing he says is, see, I've provided for you. He doesn't talk to him about his job. Not yet. He doesn't, he doesn't get in here about this, you know, that, that, that garden, tending to and keeping that garden. He talks to him about his provision. He said, see, I have given you. I have given you. As a matter of fact, if we, if we look at, we, I don't have time to delve into it too deep tonight, but if you look at what God said he gave him, he gave him things that had seed in it. 
In other words, you're going to survive if you do this right, Adam. You can live perpetually off taking the fruit, taking the seed out of the fruit, right. putting it in the ground, bringing it back up, right. and you're going to live off seed time and harvest forever. Amen. That's the way I designed it. Amen. In other words, so God gave Adam everything he needed before Adam even came on the planet. Amen? Amen. All the food, then, you know, God even knew that Adam needed companionship. And then, so God put him to sleep and then brought him a companion. Now, Adam didn't know he needed a companion. Adam didn't know he needed food or air or the sun. He didn't know that. But God knew what Adam needed before Adam knew what he needed. Are you following what I'm saying to you? Jesus says something over in Matthew 6, uh, over in verse 8. Go over here real quick. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Hallelujah. Because God knew what Adam needed before he needed it. Matthew 6, verse 7. And when you pray, y'all there? And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, or don't pray like the heathen, or don't pray like the Gentiles. For they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. Do not be like the Gentiles, the heathens the world, for your father knows the things you have need of when? Before you ask them. So before Adam knew he had a need, God already knew he needed things and God had already not, he didn't just know, uh, know that he needed it, he had already provided it. So everything you and I need, God, and not just that he knows we need it, he has already provided things for us. There is already an inheritance, incorruptible, reserved in heaven for you. Everything you need is already reserved for you. You don't need to convince God to bless you. You don't need to convince God to supply your needs. It's his good will. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Everything we need, God has already provided. He's already set it up before we came along. Hallelujah. But he said, don't pray like the heathen. Don't, don't pray like the heathens. Don't pray like the heathens. Yet most of the body of Christ is praying like the heathens. Yes. <laughs> because why? Not resting in God's care. Not resting in God's supply. Not resting in God's promises. And so they, again, disobey Matthew 6, 31, which says, do not worry. or Don't be anxious. Don't take thought. And people are still worried. Hallelujah. Let's, let's repeat this declaration from last night. Say this with me again. I do not worry about my needs. I cast my cares on God. Back up. Do this. Take, take your hand like this. All your cares in here. Say, I cast my cares on God. Do it again this time like you really have cares in your hand. I cast my cares on God. See, that's what it means when you cast it. You're throwing it so far from you, you can't reach it anymore. I get it out of me, right? Yes, he cares for me. He cares for me. Said he cares for me. He cares for I, me. Rest I rest in him. I'm carefree. I'm worry free. I am stress free. And I am sickness free. My needs are met. My needs are I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. I live in abundance. I live in and I'm a paymaster of the gospel. Yeah, of it, the is gospel. Is so, it is so. And it will be so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the prophet of your own life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, we looked over here at Isaiah 46 last night, and we were talking about uh, Bell and Nebo. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like characters on Friday or something. <laughs> Bell and Nebo. Remember, Bell here uh, is the same as Bell, B A A L who was uh, a, a chief Babylonian deity. He would have been uh, one of the main, or if not the main god of the Babylonian system, or that the Babylonians worship. But we also looked at his prophet last night. Uh, Baal bows down, Isaiah 46, verse 1. Baal bows down, Nebo stoops. Nebo, uh, we saw, is, his name is, is, means prophet. He's the Babylonian deity who presided over learning and letters. So he's a prophet who educates people on the Babylonian system. 
talks you all into how the Babylonians do things right. to make people think that that is the right way. Yeah, right. And yet, the Babylonian system has untaught what God originally taught. Right. And it's crept right into the church. Yeah. Many people come into the church, they get saved but never get their minds renewed. And because the minds are never renewed to the system of God, uh, they, they, they are stuck talking um, uh, nebonics. <laughs> Nebonics. Y'all know what ebonics is, right? But there, there's a language called nebonics. That's the language of the Babylonian system is nebonics. And I was thinking about this. You know, people, when they go over to foreign countries, let's say for work, some kind of contract work or whatever, uh, generally what they, what they try to find if they're in a foreign place is they try to find a group of people called expatriates. These are people who are from America. They're American citizens, but they're living in a foreign land, but they, they gather together so that they can talk the same language, they can, they can communicate, they can, they can work together because, because they have not learned the language of the land where they're living in now. Got it? Now you and I are from another land. Okay, I'm not sure if y'all are. You and I, our citizenship is in heaven. We are not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're strangers and pilgrims. We're aliens here, right? right now, that's why it's good for you and I to get together with all the expatriates, right. all, all the foreigners, so because we get together and we can talk our heavenly language Come on. Right. Come on. rather than talk the, the nebonics of that world Come system. Right. And when you spend time trying to talk nebonics, it, your mind gets confused because, see, your spirit's been born again, but your mind, when you're talking nebonics, your spirit and your soul, they're, they're clashing against each other. And, and you, you, you become an unstable soul. And you can't really function in the kingdom system where God wants us to function. But we want to get rid of our nebonics, right? Now, we looked last night. Let's go back over to the book of Daniel real quick. Daniel, that's over a few books from uh, Isaiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. All right, Daniel chapter 1, and we looked at this king, Nebuchadnezzar. Y'all remember him, right? I said y'all remember him, right? Yeah. And we told you that Nebuchadnezzar, his name, and actually his name means, may Nebo protect the crown. May Nebo protect the crown. So, Nebuchadnezzar was a servant of Nebo. He gave honor and allegiance to Nebo. All right? That's what his name meant. That's what the whole system that he was overseeing uh, meant, uh, was all about, about serving and listening to the prophet Nebo. So we saw last night in, cha in uh, chapter 1 how they had uh, taken the, the, the uh, Jews, these people of Judah, into captivity. They sought young men and people to come and learn their language, right. wanted to teach them Nebonics, right? right? Want to find those ones who didn't have blemish. They were good-looking people, and they wanted to get them over into learning a new system. They could learn science and all those kind of things. Right. And they, they changed names, yeah. stripped them of their divine identity to get them over into a, a Baal identity, right. to get them to identify with that system, as opposed to remaining dependent upon God. Right. All right? Yes. Now, in, I think we stopped here a little bit, a little short of this last night. But let's look at, at Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Uh -huh. Remember, they were go going to go through three years of training where they're going to eat the king's meat, his delicacies, in exchange for them serving him. Right, right. We said, anytime you get into eating the, that meat and that system, that stuff, right. you have to serve it. Right. Right. And we can't serve two masters. Right, right, right. So, yeah, you know, I, I, people play around with this stuff. They think we're just talking, you know, well, they're just, they just talking up there. That Derba came along, and, you know, I don't want to, they mess with my debt. I'm comfortable in debt. You're right. That's the problem. You're comfortable in Nebonics and Babylonian system that you're comfortable being a slave. And God said, you can't serve both. You can't serve both. Now, there's a lot more than just debt. <laughs> Greed, lust, poverty. All those things are involved in that system. You got it? 
Now, let's watch here in verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So in other words, Daniel, along with those other young men, they said, we don't want to participate in that. We're going we're to we're be Babylonian dropouts. <laughs> we're dropouts. Now, notice, now, some people might say, no, you can't do that. You got to know how to function in this system out here. But see, if you make a decision to not defy yourself, God will give you favor with people. That's what happened to them. You read the next verse, God, God had given them favor with this, with this eunuch. So what he had committed in his heart to do and those other young men with him, they didn't have to do it. You don't have to do what they do. God will give you favor and you can get all around it. Now you got to catch this here. Now, so we know what happened. For 10 days they tried this whole this diet, that what we call the Daniel fast. And they, they had this certain diet, and afterwards, after they, they were shown to be healthier and stronger, better looking than all the rest. So they continued this diet. Not just 10 days, they continued it. All right? They kept on going in this diet. Now, it was more than just a diet. It was a rebellion against the system. And I'm going to show you here in a moment, it was a working of their faith. Because go over two chapters, you're going to find something different. Or find something more over here in two chapters. Did you know this story here? In chapter 3, you find where Nebuchadnezzar, right? Where he erects a golden image for his God. Who's his God? Baal. He erects a golden image and makes a decree that everybody has to bow down to that image to worship their gods. All right? But we know these young men, you know the story. Most of y'all have been in church a long time. You know the story. They refuse to bow. Now, let's look over here in uh, verse, verse uh, 13. I start at verse 12. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve who? Your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, uh, in rage and fury, the system will always get mad when you buck against it, <laughs> gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, again, spoke saying to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God? See, that's the primary thing here. See, the, it, the image was just representation. The issue is you're not serving my gods. See, and what we got to do is see the gods behind that system. People look, keep looking at the little stuff, but it's the gods behind it. He says, so you're not serving my gods or worship, you don't worship the gold image which I've set up. Verse 15, now if you are ready, I'm going to give you another chance because I like you. Now if you're ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, a harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of uh, music, and you fall down and worship the image which I've made good. Notice the, the involvement of music in this. But if you do not, <laughs> I don't have time to deal with it, but y'all understand, you can catch it. But if you do not worship, you see, it's, it's it, well, I, I can say it. Satan, Satan is, is strategic at using music to teach. Y'all ain't saying anything. He uses music to teach. That's why you got to be careful with all these songs that just because they have a catchy beat, a catchy tune, these, and you don't realize what you're saying, these songs are teaching you something. All right? Now watch this. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And watch, watch his, his next thing. And who is the God? See, his mind is all about Baal. Who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? In other words, he's saying, my, my God is the biggest God. He said, I want to know this God that you all must be serving. Because you wouldn't eat my meat, wouldn't eat my food. Now you refuse to bow down to my image and serve my gods. Who is this God you have? That would deliver you out of my hands. Now watch Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We don't even need to, need to think about this here. Now, this, this is a title fight right here. This is, this is about, about to be God against God. He said, he said, if that is the case, this is what they said, if that is the case, if, in other words, if you're going to throw us into the fire, our God, capital G-O-D, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. So he's able, and he will. Peter said, told us, and he knows how. So, so say, say he's able, he will, and he knows how. Now this is the God we serve here. Now, these guys are standing here. They're in their title fight. They're, they're, they're in, in, a, in a precarious position here because, because they, they, they can be thrown into this fire, but they have some confidence in their God. Right, right, right. Now, catch this. They've been working their faith. Yeah. Yeah. They were working it on the food. Right. Chapter 1. You remember that? Yeah. Right. See, and they worked it on that level, and they saw how God brought them through yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. They saw that when they stood for God, how God brought them. And these gentlemen, not only did they come through the fast looking good, but they received promotion. See, when you get some experience under your belt, when you've tried God, when you've tested and you, you've, you've, you've worked your faith and seen God move in your life, you get some confidence now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These guys are standing in front of a fiery furnace. Talking to the king. Listen, man, we're confident. We don't even need to, we don't, we don't need to answer. You don't answer these questions. You know, you ain't, we don't need to go through all that. Look, look at here, look at here, look at here. The God we serve, he is able, he will, and we add in, and he knows how. Now watch what happens here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if not, mm-hmm. and you know, people preach this, but if he doesn't deliver us. Oh, yeah. no. But he's not saying if he doesn't deliver us. They already said he will. Right. They've already said they already have confidence that he will yeah. deliver us. Yeah. But they're saying if not, or if you don't throw us in, or if you change your mind. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, king, we, that we do not serve your gods. Let it be known that we do not serve your gods. Right. No, we worship the gold image which you have set up. In other words, we're not going to change that matter what you do. Right. We are going to serve God. We know by experience that God can, he will, and he knows how. Because, see, they're refusing to bow down to a system. They're refusing to bow down to a God. They're refusing to bow down to a spirit. They're, they're refusing to give in because they know how good, they know their covenant. Yes, sir. Even though they're in a strange land, they know their covenant. Yes, sir. They know the promise of God, that God will surely deliver them. Hallelujah. They know it. They know it. And so they're not going to back down just because of a fire. I'm telling you, there's going to be some times coming up in our lives. Oh, some of y'all might have already been through some where you were, you were put to the test, where there was a fire in front of you. Would you go this way or would you stay with God? Oh, some of y'all, you, you had not been through anything yet, obviously. But I'm telling you, if you stay in this way, there are going to be some time when the devil wants to test you. He's going to try you. He's going to come against you. He's going to put something so large in your face where you're going to have to decide, do I? Come on now. Come on, sir. You're going to have to know your God. You're going to have to know your covenant. You're going to have to know what you're entitled to. All right, now, let's look back over here in, in, uh, in uh, Isaiah. I want to show you again here this whole, that whole Nebo, how that thing works there with Nebuchadnezzar. He's trying to get people to bow down. Now, we, we know the story. Nebuchadnezzar loses his mind, goes crazy, because that system will make you crazy. <laughs> It'll make you crazy. He finally had to say, you know, y'all God, he, he is God. He is God. All right? Now, 
In 46, verse 1, it says, again, Baal bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols were on the beasts and on the cattle. Your carriages were heavily loaded, a burden to the weary beasts. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. Now, this is God talking here. <laughs> He's saying, your little gods y'all been worshiping, your little gods, your little idols, he said, they couldn't, they couldn't save you. They, they couldn't deliver you. You know, I imagine God kind of chuckling when he's saying that. <laughs> y'all, y'all, you, you, come on now. You, you, you just, you sanctified imagination. You just, God, God's laughing because he's, he's saying, y'all, you all got to go and cut a tree down, carve the tree, design your God, set him up on a pedestal, Take the rest of the wood, throw it in the fire to warm yourselves. He said, that's stupid. <laughs> See, because God knows there is no God beside him. He knows it. When God says there's no God beside him, there is none. Because, you know, God is omniscient. Did y'all know that? He's omniscient, which means he knows everything. He knows everything. So if God says there's no God beside him, I, I can't, there's no God beside him. It's done. Now, he's laughing because, see, God's had experience with this before. Y'all remember back in, uh, what's that, 1 Samuel, when uh, the Philistines came into the camp, the children of Israel, and stole the Ark of the Covenant. Remember that? The Ark of the Covenant was the embodiment of the, of the presence of God. And they, the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant into the temple where Dagon their false god was. <laughs> so they set up Dagon, I mean, they set up the Ark of the Covenant across from where Dagon was. They come in the next morning, and there's Dagon, their false god, all of them on the floor. So they said, well, we're going to pick him back up. Now you got to hear this, because that's what they're doing out there. Come on. Their system's falling, it's crashing, it's failing, but they, they get into a back office Come and try to prop it back up. Country's in debt over here, so they go and borrow more money. Right, right. Or we're going to raise our debt ceiling because we're in debt. <laughs> they're, they're trying to prop it up. So they go out, come and they, set, they prop Dagon back up. Next morning. So they figured it was just, you know, maybe the wind knocked it down. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe one of those golden rats came through and just tilt, you know, tilt. Come the next morning, there's Dagon falling again. This time, face, head down, face toward the ark, arms and legs cut off. How did that happen? Because the false gods cannot stand up to the presence of the true and living God. That system cannot stand up to the power of the kingdom of God. No, no, no philosophy can stand up against the word of God. No ideology can stand up to the word of God. The word of the Lord is right, Psalm 33 verse 4. The word is right. I don't care what all the pundits say, the word is right. I don't care what the analysts say, the word is right. So God is, he's here again. And say, oh, God, okay, I got, now I got Bell and Nebo. Okay, Bell and Nebo. <laughs> here y'all come with y'all boys. And he said, <laughs> but God, God says this, I want to show you this here. He said, they, they bow down, they fall. Now, I, I, want, I want to go um, uh, and show you something here. He says, they themselves, or they could not deliver the burden, they themselves, but have themselves gone into captivity. Because that system cannot save you. The system is going to keep falling. Galatians 6, we know it says it's over here, what's that, verse 7, uh, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. What's a man's souls? That shall he also reap. Whoever sows to the flesh, will of the flesh, come on, 
reap corruption. The problem with that system is it's so unto the flesh. It's all flesh. And because it's all flesh, it's just corrupt. So it doesn't matter. Well, we're going to get a new president. Great. Great. That's great. I mean, he might, might make better moral decisions, but it's still a corrupt system. And you don't want to mess around with that system out there. Hallelujah. But he that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life or everlasting zoe, the God kind of life. Now, I want to show you something here. This is very interesting. It's so great that Praise was singing. Uh, at least a couple of songs were saying about there's no one like our God and no, no God. Look at, look at chapter 45 for, for a minute. Let's go backwards. 45. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that system out there, it, 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 all they look at is, is, is data, mm-hmm. science, facts. Mm-hmm. They, they, they don't leave any room for faith or the supernatural. It's all about here's what our stats say, here's how the trends work, and we figure by 2025, this is what you need. When, you know, they, they have commercials about how much you're going to need for retirement. <laughs> and they tell you, you know, you got to put away this amount of dollar and invest in it over here because for your retirement. And I told you about that a few Sundays ago. You, I don't want you to think about no retirement. Now, did pastor say you shouldn't save money? No. Did pastor say you shouldn't accumulate? No. No. But see, you can't come in here with this mindset that when you reach a certain age, you're going to start taking care of yourself. Because if you do, you will be. And I guarantee you, you'll never have enough to last you. I'm not even talking about living 120 years. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, you can read the whole thing. There's several times through Isaiah 45 where God says, there is no God besides me. Yeah. Verse 5, verse 6, he says, there's no God besides me. But uh, verse, verse uh, 14, there's no God, there, there's no other God. There's, there's no other, there is no other God. But look, let me start at verse, um, verse 18. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and what? There is no one. No, notice God says, I formed the earth and made it. Down there he says, I formed it to be inhabited. Yeah. Ain't it funny? They spend all that money trying to look for other places where men, people can live, life on other planets. And God said, I formed the earth to be inhabited. I mean, we could save billions of dollars in our... Yeah. If we just read the Bible. He made the earth to be inhabited. All right, now watch this. <clears throat> he said, I'm the Lord, there is no other. I have not spoken in secret in the dark place of the earth. I did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are what? Right. That are right. Verse 20, assemble yourselves and come, draw near together. You have escaped from the nations. They have no knowledge who carry the wood of their carved image and pray to a God, come on, that cannot save. Those gods cannot save. Ears that cannot hear, mouths that cannot speak, eyes that do not see, hands but cannot save. Tell and bring forth your cause. Let, yes, let them uh, take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord, and there is, come on, there it is again. No other God besides me, a just God and a Savior, there is. Come on. Now watch what he says here for us. Look to me. This is God's message, ladies and gentlemen. In, in 2014, this is what God is yelling to the body of Christ. Look to me and be saved or and be delivered, all you ends of the earth, for I am God. He keeps saying this over and over and over and over again. I am God. There is no other. I'm the only God. There is nobody else. Stop looking out there at that stuff. Don't look anywhere else. I'm the only God. So he says, look to me and be saved. I have sworn by myself, the word has, not, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not, shall not return. In other words, the word goes out, it continues into infinity. 
that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath or swear. He shall say, surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. Surely in the Lord I have righteousness and strength. That word strength is the Hebrew word oz, 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 which means might or strength, material or physical, personal or social or political. In other words, in, in the Lord here, <laughs> we have strength. In the Lord, we have righteousness and strength, physical strength. Material strength. Y'all not catching that. I can be have righteousness and have material strength. In the Lord, I'm strong. Let the weak say, come on. So you and I ought to be strong, not only physically, but materially strong. Now he said, if you look to me, that's where this strength is going to come from. Your material strength is going to come from looking to him. Yes, not looking to the world, not looking to your boss, not looking to your 401k, not looking to any plan. Your material strength is going to come when we look to God. Amen. Boy, I'm preaching better than y'all let know. He says here, to him men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incensed against, them, against him and all those who, who, who snub their nose at God. I don't want to hear that church stuff. I don't want to hear that prosperity stuff. He said they're going to be ashamed. That's what God's getting ready to do. Shaming this whole system out here. In the Lord, all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. That word justified means vindicated. And, and that word glory means shine. So in the Lord... We're going to be vindicated, and we're going to shine. Well, y'all y'all got to. Anybody here ready to shine? Now, now this, this justified, this vindicated, let, let me help you. See, I, 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 I preach this right here, right? I, I preach this. I, I believe this. I know this is right. But you know, there are people who don't believe this. You know there are people in the church who absolutely attack what we preach? They call it heresy, they call it foolishness, they call it malarkey, they call it all kind of stuff, and they call us all fools and cultish and all that kind of stuff for teaching and preaching this stuff, and we believe what we believe, and we come to church, the church on a Friday night, and you know, we crazy and all that kind of stuff. But he said, in the Lord, we're going to be justified. See, you got to catch this here. See, when folk talk about you for believing what you believe, but you drive up in your testimony, you justify it. <laughs> See, when they, when, they, when they get all over Facebook and talk about you, that's what happened to me last week. I found that people was dogging me out on Facebook. But they drive by my house, I'm justified. See, if I were to testify about everything God has done, I'm justified. Jesus said wisdom is justified in her children. Otherwise, when you get the evidence, when anybody got any evidence of what God has done for you in your life, when all your friends and your family and folk did this, you crazy, but you drove up or you came up with your evidence. Experience is never at the mercy of an argument. <laughs> While they're arguing against tongues, and they're arguing against prophecy, and they're arguing against spiritual fathering, and they're arguing against, against sowing and reaping, and they're arguing against tithes, and they're arguing against having to abide by the word of God, They're really arguing against the word. I'm talking about church folk. I don't mean the world. 
The church, are, they're arguing against the word. But when you can stand up and say, can I tell you what God has done for me? You are justified. And he said, not only will you be just, justified, but you shall glory or you're going to shine. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Are y'all ready to shine? Y'all, yeah. boy, y'all, y'all don't, you ain't convincing me. Are you ready to shine? Oh, yeah. it's, it's our time to shine. Yeah. See, when darkness comes on the earth yeah. and gross darkness the people and light arises upon us, yes, you can't help but shine. Yeah. While they're going down, God's bringing us up. Yeah. 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 Why? Because that system cannot sustain you. It's, it's crumbling on itself. Everything they're doing, Thomas, is just trying to prop it up, and they know. It's broken down. I heard Bill Wilson say this, and I just like it when he says, it's just, that's like straight up chairs on the Titanic. It's still going down. It's still going down. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Go back to Isaiah. We're in 46 now. Verse 3. Watch what God says here. He says, listen to me, O house of Jacob. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. And all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld by me from birth. Remember we talked about this last night about how we got to, we said, we said uh, uh, how you cannot get in this mode that when you are away, you got to ask God to do something over there because it's always been God. So notice what God says here. He says, who have been upheld by me from birth. So God said, I've been the one carrying you from birth. I've been there all the time for you. Who have been carried from the womb. God's been carrying you. Now, here's, here's the issue that happens to many people in the body of Christ, just like what happens to uh, teenagers. Uh, at some point, you start fretting about stuff, and you start thinking you got to do it yourself. All of a sudden, you get kids. We got, I, I know kids now in middle school talking about they want a job. I want a job in middle school. What do what you, what you need? See, all of a sudden, they start getting older, and they start looking around and seeing things. And, and they, they begin, or they lose their rest in their parents' care. And what happens to us in the body of Christ, if we're not careful... We will lose our rest in our Father's care. And God is saying, listen, from the moment you were born on this planet, I've been taking care of you. Now, what happened when you all of a sudden got grown and felt like you need to take care of yourself? Here's the thing. You, you know, you're, <laughs> you're growing up and your mom will buy you some tracks. Y'all remember tracks? Some of y'all aren't old enough to remember tracks. Those of us who are 35, 40, 40 above remember tracks. Go to Kmart, one of those stores like that. They, they were three stripes, but they weren't. No, they were four stripes, but they weren't Adidas. And normally they, they, would, they would tie together with a little plastic little strap, and you had to try them on, both shoes at the same time. Walk around the store like this, where you're going to try those shoes on. Bubbles cost $1.49 to make your feet feel fine. Right? And when you were home, you know, you, you, you had to wear them. But as you got a little older, you start seeing other shoes, like Nikes and Ponies and Pumas and all those shoes begin to come out. And Zirconis, British Knights, remember those? <laughs> BK, kangaroos with a little pocket on the side, remember that? All of a sudden, you, you said, my mama can't do that. My mama can't do that. So I got to go get it. 
See, and what happens with us, God will give us, he'll bless us, you know. I, I watch this happen to people, you know, they first get saved, and God is always really good about giving us quick starts. <laughs> I, I love that about God. People first get born again, and they get quick starts. The things just start happening so fast. They're like, wow, things are so fast. It's like in a week, I got a job and a car and an apartment, and wow. Because <laughs> God is a quick start God. He's, in, in, come on, encourage you. You know, but, but. Then, then as you got to start working your faith, see, because now things start getting a little bigger. You had the one apartment, you know, it was just one, one bedroom, it was an efficiency, it was 300 square feet, you know, and in the worst part of town, but it was your own place, and praise God, all right. Then all of a sudden you start, you see something else, smelling yourself. You want a nice apartment. Now I want a nice apartment. A walk-in closet. And something, something gets in here. You know, it's the devil. That little imp. Well, you know, yeah, but can he give bread in the wilderness? Remember the children of Israel, Psalm 78, talked about that? Yeah, God, sure, God, you can do that, but can he give us this? See, what happens, we start, because we, we start increasing on the inside, and we start, oh. But God is saying to us, I don't care how big your dream is. I don't care how big your desire is. I'm the one enlarging your heart. That's right. Come on. Come on. I'm the one giving you to desire a thing. Yes, if I can give you to desire a thing, I can give you the thing. The reason I gave you to the Zyla thing is because I have this thing reserved in heaven for you. It already has your name on it already. I don't need you to figure out how to get it. I don't need you to figure out how to work your faith, how to stick to my word, how to abide in me. So, so it doesn't matter how big it gets. My wife and I were just thinking about you know, the fact that, that we've, we've been in our home now for a year, a solid year. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Going in there, I couldn't see it. I'm talking to this nobody. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't see it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. So I had to get in over in the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I couldn't wrap my mind around it. Yes. Come on. But my spirit knew. Yes. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had to bring my soul in line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Lord, if you can get, you can get us in here, how are you going to do this here thing? And, and, and it's been now 12 solid months. And it, we, we never asked for an extension, never had to come late, never had to do anything. Thank you, Lord. Every month got to work that faith. Now, this is what God is saying out here. I carried you when you was in that little apartment. You, I had you when, when all you had was that, that little A to B beater. You know that little beater? Y'all know what a beater is? I was carrying you then. I, I was putting the gas in there when it was 89 cent. Don't you fret because the gas is $4. I was paying the 89 cent. Don't you fret because milk is going to $3. I was paying it for it when it was a dollar and 75 cents. See, God is trying to get us to, 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 to not all of a sudden lock him down, put a limit on him because things get bigger. He said, I've been carrying you from the beginning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you stick with me, he says, even to your old age. This is for all our, our retirees or retire wannabes. Even to your old age. In other words, God is saying age is just a number. I don't, I'm not going to stop increasing because you turn 65. You got to get out of this mindset that when I turn 65, I shut it down. God doesn't want to shut it down. 
Abraham didn't shut it down when he turned that divide. Isaac didn't shut it down. Jacob, they didn't shut it down. They were just getting crunk. Because God says, I'll increase you more and more. So watch what he says here. I gotta, I'm out of time, but watch this. He says, even to your old age, I am he. And even to your two great hairs, I will carry you. Exclamation point. I will carry you. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to carry you along. You're in my hands. You've always been in my hands. <laughs> I will carry you. Praise God. Now watch what he says here. He says, I have made and I will bear. Now that word bear is a Hebrew word, nasa. Which means to lift or lift off. Sound familiar? Yes. To lift, to exalt. He says, I made and I'm, I'm going to lift you. Y'all got to catch this here now. I don't, I don't care. You, you can't regard what's going on out here. He said, I, I've been there from the beginning. I made, I'm going to lift you, I'm going to exalt you, I will carry you. I will support you. I can't get no child support. I will support you. Raggedy husband left me and give me no spousal support. I will support you. <laughs> I will sustain you. Sustain. 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 That's, that's why we're still in the house. He's been sustaining us. That's why the lights everything so long. He's been sustaining us. See, y'all, you see, uh, you know, Dag and talk, I ain't talking about $7,000 debt uh, credit card bill yet, but I know, I know some other stuff now. And my, my salary don't cut it. <laughs> He's been sustaining us. And he'll sustain you. I said he'll sustain you. He'll sustain you. He, he goes on to say here, I will aid you. I will aid you. I will assist you. I, I can't get no government assistance. We got a different sort of entitlement. I will assist you. I, I, I need to get some financial aid to go to school. If God wants you to go to school, he'll aid you. <laughs> he said, I'll assist you. He says, even I will carry you or carry and will deliver you. God said, I said, let me do that. I want you to rest in me. I want you to let me take care of you. I don't want you worried about how you're going to get your needs met. I don't want you worried about how you're going to move to the next level. God told us that last year, January last year. Remember that? The prophetic word that day? He said, I myself am moving you. I remember when it came out of me, like, bubble up. I'm like, uh, y'all know I don't prophesy at will. I myself am moving you. That's what he's saying here. I'm going to move you. I will carry you. Don't worry about it. I got you. Now watch it. Let me, let me close right here. Let me close right here. Get off the clock. I'm dropping down to verse 12. I'm, just, I'm going to add this in here. I like this, verse 12. Verse 12 says, listen to me. Hard-headed, hard-headed, stubborn-hearted, stiff-necked. <laughs> what are you, who are you talking to? Those people who he's trying to care for them, and they're just trying to work against that system. They're trying to say, listen to me. He says, who are far from righteousness? I bring 
my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation or deliverance, you look it up in the Hebrew, shall not linger, and I will place salvation or deliverance in Y'all know what Zion is, right? In Zion, for Israel, my glory. So God's placing, watch this, he's placing salvation in us. Catch what, what I'm saying to you. Here's how, why we need to get this. Why we need this prosperity, why we need to get an understanding of God's system, how he works, how we need to work, is because he's placing salvation in us. So when the world's going down and people are, are getting confused and all kinds of things are happening, they're looking for salvation. They're looking for somebody with an answer. He said, I'm putting it in you. It's, it's that same Joseph anointing on us again. The salvation for all Israel's household was there in Joseph. The salvation for your family is in you. Salvation for people all that, that you know that are all tied to you, it's in you. He's putting it in us. But we got to let him carry us. Let him bear us up. Let him exalt us. Let him pay the bills. <laughs> you, you missed that. I said let him pay the bills. Let him pay the bills. Let him do it. Because that's what a father does. Don't get so grown. Matter of fact, Jesus said you need to become like little children. Amen. Little children just know how to rest. What's for dinner? Yeah. I'm hungry. Mom, I'm hungry. Just rest. And he'll take care of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Did y'all receive that tonight? Amen. Give the Lord a great praise. Get on your feet.